Hi there, everybody, and welcome to the Art Procurement Podcast. I'm Philip Heidson. And I'm Kelly Barner. And all through November, we're celebrating five years of the Art of Procurement Podcast. And to celebrate, we're answering some of the most frequently asked questions that we have received from listeners since the podcast began with a daily five-minute show. So the question we're going to cover today is, how do you get buy-in for sustainability initiatives? And sustainability is another value lever we've been talking about for a long time as procurement professionals, and it is becoming increasingly important. In fact, here in the US, following the 2020 election, it's likely going to become even more so as President-elect Biden looks to rejoin the Paris Accord and more likely um, implement new environmental requirements on businesses. So the challenge we've always had in procurement is that ultimately we're spending somebody else's money and a number of sustainability initiatives have not actually hit the mark because they were framed as good practice or things that we should do from an environmental perspective, which is, of course, very important, but we're not spending the money. You know, we haven't really framed them as initiatives that are impacting the bottom line. But the reality is that the best sustainability initiatives are really just good old demand management. By reducing demand, you reduce your organization's use of a particular resource, which then helps you become a more sustainable organization. So here are just some examples. Uh, Reduce office energy consumption. You know, once we're back in the office, reducing office footprints, which is actually going to be fueled by, I think, uh, coronavirus. For example, moving to things like hot desks rather than fixed desks. Looking at optimizing your freight movements to reduce the miles driven or flown, and even adjusting the mode of transportation entirely where you're able to do so to one that is a little bit more environmentally friendly. Changing or redesigning packaging specifications. So an example is the work that Procter & Gamble procurement team have actually recently done here at the end of 2020 with their packaging engineers to completely redesign how shampoo is sold from large plastic bottles to refillable pouches. My point here really that I want to make is that sustainability initiatives have often had a PR problem when it comes to trying to get buy-in, but when framing that sustainability strategy that's going to come with your category or a sourcing strategy, framing it as, as one that reduces consumption, and one that drives ongoing efficiencies, um, and therefore it's not only good for the planet and for your brand, but it's also saving money, well, that's really the way to get buy-in. And like anything else, early wins demonstrate impact. That's going to give you the foundation for building a much more nuanced program where you may have initiatives that don't have bottom line impact. But once you are demonstrating that sustainability can be both, that's going to give you, like I said, that really strong foundational to go further. I want to thank you for listening to today's podcast. All the podcasts in this series can be found at artofprocurement.com slash five years. That's the number five. That's artofprocurement.com slash five years.